ordinary horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Away! Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring, you kids, beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh, toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. A troop of United States cavalry rode leisurely along a trail in the hills near the town of Mill Rock. They were heading for Fort Leeton, and Major Adams, the commanding officer, allowed the colonel's daughter Sally to accompany them on a surprise visit to her father. The major rode with an army scout who had just arrived. The scout was saying, I can't savvy why the colonel would have his daughter come to the fort at this time. He doesn't know she's on the way. Her aunt talked me into bringing them. But they're with us, so that's that. Tell me, uh, is there fear of an uprising? Yes, yeah, sure. The tribe of Comanches under Big Eagle has been showing signs of restlessness. They've been holding councils of war. I've learned that someone is supplying them with rifles and ammunition. Then the colonel actually expects an attack on the fort? He thinks it's very possible. Uh, Lieutenant, come over here a moment. Yes, sir. The major quickly discussed the situation with his aide, Lieutenant Barton. Then the major said... Just before we left to come here, we received a dispatch from Colonel Harvey. He suggested we pitch camp in the vicinity of Mill Rock until we could locate a certain man who can guide us safely from there to the fort. Otherwise, we might run the risk of ambush. I remember such a dispatch. I believe he also explained how we were to reach the guide he mentioned, didn't he? Yes, he said to send a message to a mission located about five miles south of Mill Rock. The padre there will see that the message reaches the guide. I recall the description he gave of the man who'd come to guide us. He'll be wearing a black mask, a white Stetson, and riding a big white stallion. That's right, sir. He's known as the Lone Ranger. Yes. Also, he carries a letter of identification from the colonel. Yes, most likely he'd bring back the note we send, too. Oh, 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 oh. Lieutenant, notify the sergeant major will camp for the night. Yes, sir. Scout left with a note for the Lone Ranger and rode toward the mission. Later, in a shack hidden in the hills, Sandy Kenton rested on a cot while he waited for his partners to return. Sandy was tall and well-built, and his well-tanned regular features gave him a rugged outdoor look. A short time at West Point, where he was expelled as undesirable, gave him a certain smoothness of speech, as well as a strong feeling of hatred for the Army. Sandy looked up as the door opened. Hi, Sandy. We 
He's got something that looks important. Yeah? What do you have? A sealed dispatch we took from an army messenger who was headed south from Mill Rock. You mean he wasn't going toward the fort? That's right. Give me the dispatch. Sure. Here it is. Troop of reinforcers. Oh, this is important. Yeah? What's it say? It says to inform the Lone Ranger that a group of reinforcements are camped near Mill Rock, waiting for him to come lead them to Fort Leeton. It's signed by the commanding officer of the troop. Who is the Lone Ranger? Well, you dope, even I've heard of him. A masked hombre riding a white stallion. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing about him. He helps the law. That's right, he does, Red. He's very clever. He could spoil our plans to have the Indians ambush the troopers. We'll get plenty of gold from Big Eagle if it succeeds. Well, the army fellow we took the dispatch from is dead, so the masked hombre won't know he's wanted and won't show up. Somebody might find that trooper's body, then another dispatch will be sent. Now, both of you go back, make certain the trooper's body isn't found. All right, sir. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? I just thought of something. Yeah, what? This, Muley. I think that masked man should show up at the trooper's camp. I don't study. What do you... Now, listen... I saw that Lone Ranger once, not too long ago. Rode a big white stallion, wore a black mask, and a white hat. But the important thing I noticed is that I'm just about his size and build. Yeah, what about it? Well, during their raids on the ranches in the valley, Big Eagle's braves brought in a white stallion. Well, now with that, a black mask and a white stetson, I'll go to the trooper's camp tomorrow afternoon and pass for the Lone Ranger. If I carry this dispatch with me, they'll have no reason to doubt my identity. Now go get rid of that scout body. The following afternoon, Sally Harvey, the colonel's daughter, was talking to the major in his headquarters tent when Sandy Kenton, posing as the Lone Ranger, was ushered in. Here he is, Major. Mighty glad to see you, sir. I'm Major Adams. This is Miss Harvey, the colonel's daughter. How do you do? How do you do, miss? I rode here, Major, as soon as I received your dispatch from the mission. I took it upon myself to suggest that your scout, the man who brought the message, stay in the hills to watch for further development. Fine, fine. I've already passed out word that the men are to take any orders you see fit to give, sir. Thank you. You think you can get us through to the fort safely? Of course, Major. Just put yourselves in my hands and I'll get you through all right. Fort Legion's only about 40 miles from here. Yes, I know, but the Army scouts have warned us to watch for an ambush by the Indians in the range of hills west of here. Don't worry. Leave everything to me. There's a narrow valley through those hills. We'll be safe taking that route, I'm sure. Have the troop ready to leave at dawn, Major. I'll come back then to guide you to that valley. I was given to understand we could trust you completely. We'll do exactly as you suggest, sir. Good. Good. I'll do some scouting for a while. Be back in time to guide you to the fort. Good day, Miss Harvey. Major. Goodbye. Goodbye. That evening, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the outskirts of Mill Rock. Tonto went to Tom for supplies. Soon he returned with news of the troopers' encampment. The Lone Ranger decided to go to offer his help at dawn. Later that night, the two crooks, Muley and Red, entered the shack where Sandy was waiting. They told of an encounter near the Apache village with two army scouts. One they had killed, the other escaped. Sandy thought a moment, then spoke. Oh, that means trouble. He'll report that he's seen Big Eagle's braves waiting in ambush. Now not there, go back to camp. The major won't use the valley route. He'll realize I lied to him about it being safe. Well, what are you going to do? There's only one other route the troop can take. We'll get in touch with Big Eagle. Have him move his braves from the valley to ambush the troopers on the other trail. In the headquarters tent at the camp, the Major's eyes flashed with anger as he talked to his aide. My Thunder Lieutenant, after what that wounded scout told us, it would be absolute suicide for us to go through the valley. I agree with you, sir. I said today I couldn't understand why that masked man... Was... Blast that masked man! He's a traitor to the country! How he gained the trust of so many is beyond me. But this time he's been found out. My orders are that the Lone Ranger is to be arrested the minute he returns to this camp. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Jenny is ten and is she good? She'd skip walk camp of the neighborhood. 
He's so quick because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. And you'll agree. You'll like that delicious toasted oat flavor. And Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your gold power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk and get that good go power. Then folks will say, She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. At dawn the following morning, the Lone Ranger left Toto to wait in a nearby grove, then rode openly along the trail leading to the camp. He drew rein as the guard challenged him. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Yes, ma'am. That's to be recognized. Very well, easy, silly big fella. I carry a letter from Colonel Harvey at Fort Leeton. Your commanding officer understands about the mask. I've come to see him. Don't move. You're under arrest. Orders of the commanding officer. Hold on. Good work. I saw the masked man approaching the camp. Keeping covered country, I'll take his gun. I don't understand this, Lieutenant. If you'll take me to your commanding officer... You won't see you. You said enough yesterday when you persuaded us to listen to your plan to lead the troops into an ambush. Oh, well, there's some mistake. I haven't been here before. Lying is a waste of time. Take those guns. The Lone Ranger stood with hands raised. The lieutenant unthinkingly stepped between the masked man and the guard, just long enough for the Lone Ranger to act. Moving fast, he dropped his hands, grabbed the gun, and at the same time gripped the lieutenant's wrist, swinging him around. Oh, hey, lieutenant, what? I have a gun at your back. Tell that guard to throw away his rifle. Hurry! No! Shoot if you want to. The shot will bring others. I give that guard the count of three. Either he throws his rifle into the bushes or I... I'll do it. You kill you, Lieutenant. There. I'll throw your gun away, too, Lieutenant. You'll be caught and hung for this. Maybe. I'll flatten it on the ground, both of you. Get down. Better do it, Lieutenant. He has the upper hand right now. Here, Silver. Perhaps you'll meet again under better circumstances, Lieutenant. Adios. Easy, steady, big fella. Oh, Silver! was already mounted and ready to join the Lone Ranger in his fast getaway from the camp. As they rode, the masked man told what had happened. When they had covered their trail enough for safety, they stopped on a hillside near the entrance to the narrow valley. Oh, 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 Ah. 
Them pointing to river now. Indian sheep raise hand, make Indian sign. You know what the signs mean? Ah, uh-huh. Sign, say, half pale face in water. So that's their plan. The river's wide at that point and stir deep. While the troopers are fording the river, the commissions intend to rush out of hiding and massacre them. Ah. Uh-huh. But if you try warn troopers, then not listen. I know. Hello, ride downstream. Cross the river beyond the bend and get to Fort Leeton. Here, take the silver boat to Colonel Harvey. He'll remember you, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Tell him the situation. He'll know what to do. Now hurry. Uh-huh. What you do? I'll ride back along the trail to meet the troopers. And shoot him, maybe. I don't think so. I'm sure I can convince the commanding officer I didn't come to the camp yesterday. Anyway, I must take the risk to hold him back. Lead now for the fort. Uh-huh. Adios, adios. Get him up. Out. Move through there. Meantime, Major Adams, Sally Harvey, and the lieutenant rode at the head of the cavalry troop. They had followed the upper trail from the camp. Suddenly, the major pointed ahead, exclaiming, Look! A rider coming toward us at a gallop! Major, take a good look! I'm sure that's the masked man! Oh, I'll be right there! Oh! 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 We haven't covered. Shall we shoot, Major? Oh, wait. Keep your gun straight on him, but take him alive. The man certainly has courage to openly face the entire troop. Take him prisoner, Lieutenant. Now wait, Major. It's been a mistake. Listen to me for a moment. Yesterday I trusted you. Today I know you to be a traitor. The man you saw yesterday was an imposter. Major, I haven't put under guard. This is another trick of his. This is no trick. I came to war and helped you. After what happened this morning, why should I risk my life if I were not telling the truth? Major, wait a minute. There is something different about this man. His voice is richer and deeper. And there's a girl I can't help but notice he's more handsome, even though he wears that mask. Why, even his gun belt and bullets are different. Well, thank you, miss. Major, I carry a letter of identification signed by Colonel Harvey. You know my father? Colonel Harvey's a friend of mine. Here's the signed letter, Major. Mm, let me look at that. Yes, this does identify you as the Lone Ranger. Miss Harvey, is this your father's handwriting? Yes, yes, it is, Major. Well, that proves the other man was an imposter. Mister, I'm sorry we misunderstood. You say you came to warn us and to help? Yes, the Comanches are in a thick grove just beyond the river. They plan to catch your troops in midstream. Oh, how terrible. They would have massacred all of us. I thought of a plan to turn the tables on the Indians, Major, if you're willing to listen. Of course. We'll do whatever you suggest, sir. What's your plan? We'll uh, leave this trail here. Right north beyond the bend in the river. Then... Later, Sandy Kenton, still dressed as the Lone Ranger, stood near a tree, near the edge of the grove across the river, talking to his partner, Red. A white horse was grazing nearby. Red, those troopers should have reached the river long before this. Yeah, something must have delayed him. Big Eagle promised us plenty of gold for helping plan this. They'll get the rifles and horses, of course. I sure hope Big Eagle did not get... Oh, that was a bugle. But it didn't sound like it came from across the river. This is more Troopers are coming down the river bank on this side. On this side? They must have been tipped off by scouts. But there are enough Comanches to take care of them. Yeah, yeah another bugle. That sound came from the west toward the fort. Troops coming over the hill from the west. The cavalry from Fort Leeson. Troopers are moving in on the grove from opposite side. <laughs> Troopers from the fort combined with the cavalry reinforcements, the Indians were outnumbered almost two to one. Moreover, many of the Indians lacked rifles. Because the army forces were moving in from two sides, the savages had little chance of escape and fought back desperately. Sandy Kenton realized the Comanches were fighting a losing fight. He decided to make a break for the river. Sandy forgot his Lone Ranger disguise and didn't realize the white horse and black mask made him conspicuous as he raced to reach the river. The Lone Ranger, helping to fight back the furious onslaught of the frenzied Comanches, heard the Major shout to him. There goes the imposter! The other man's plan is getting away! Now, Jerry, move to the way! The Silver readily responded to his master's urgent cry and galloped in pursuit of the fleeing crook. The troopers stared in confusion as the two masked fighters raced by. Sandy glanced back, and seeing the Lone Ranger behind him, emptied his gun in a frantic attempt to stop his pursuer. Galloping horse spoiled his aim, and the bullets went wild. Master Big Fellow, move to the Without lessening his speed, 
Sandy forced his horse to plunge into the water. The great horse Silver entered the river just behind Sandy and quickly moved alongside. The Lone Ranger reached out and dragged Sandy from the saddle. You're through! No! Both men fell into the water. Sandy struggled to place a blow to the Lone Ranger's chin. I'll kill you! Just to quiet you! Sandy went underwater a moment from the force of the blow. The Lone Ranger grasped him firmly, then held him under. He's too off here. For a few moments, Sandy Kenton was held under the water, then brought up momentarily for air. <laughs> and lowered again until he was gasping for breath. Now, wait, don't, don't I give up? You'll never want to impersonate me again. Stop. Take off that mask. <laughs> well, Sandy Kenton, the law has wanted you for some time. Oh, I'll take you ashore now. Well, Major, here's your imposter. He's a hunted outlaw named Sandy Kenton. He was honorably discharged from the academy at West Point some time ago. He's a traitor. I'll take him to the fort and have the colonel handle his case. Kimotabi, it's good you catch him. Now people know truth. Troopers captured two other crooks. Who help him? He'll never try to bring disgrace to the Lone Ranger again. I promise you that, Donald. Oh, Mercy, you will. Miss Harvey, I thought you were safe in the wagon with your aunt a mile north of here. Sorry, Major, but I just had to see the fight. I walked from the hill back there. Mister, I'm sure Dad will want to recommend you for a medal for what you've done. If you'll come with us to the fort... Oh, well, please give my regards to your father, Miss Harvey. As to medals, I have no use for one. Tom and I are glad we were able to help. We'll see you all at the fort sometime. I I turn this trader over to you, Major. I don't know I'll leave now. Here's Hilbert. Adios, everyone. Easy to be caught. Move, Hilbert! Goodbye, sir. Hey, Major. Hilbert, you know what happened to Sandy Kenton? Yeah, I know. Sandy Kenton was killed by the Lone Ranger. Oh, Hilbert, you mean the Lone Ranger? Yeah, Hilbert. Hilbert, you mean the Lone Ranger? Yeah, Hilbert. Hilbert, you mean the Lone he noticed the way you were looking at him and decided to leave in a hurry. But you'll find that many of the officers at the fort are handsome and susceptible. Major, I don't think any man will ever make me forget the Lone Ranger. Turn in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Stolen Money. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with we. Sort of gives a guy a lift knowing that champions are made, not born. For instance, let's trace the inspiring story of Al Rosen, famed Cleveland Indian slugger. Let's go back when Al was small, an average boy, no champ at all. He practiced hitting, third base play, and ate his Wheaties every day. Just as champs get on their way. Today, Al smacks that ball a mile, been eating Wheaties all this while. Why, Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties since he was a little guy 22 years ago. Plenty of power all right in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Now Al Clark, and here's the pitch. vowed to capture a killer named Ozark Riley, but the outlaw planned to cheat both justice and the Lone Ranger. You'll enjoy this next exciting adventure and its thrilling climax. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, Directed by Charles D. Livingston and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. 
This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs> 